Today, we will work through a web development coding exercise together. To complete this exercise, you need to know JavaScript, HTML, and a little bit of CSS. The link to the starter files is in the description. Please pause the video and read the instruction in the index.js file. Take a look at the uh, HTML table in the index.html file right there. And there's also a tiny bit of external CSS for the individual TDs for the, the, um, uh, the size of it. By the way, the CSS is not mine, uh, so therefore I will have to warn you to uh, be vigilant about using pixel as your unit of measurement. There are very few scenarios where that, uh, that is um, the right course of action. These days we utilize REM units uh, for our unit of measurement. Anyhow, there isn't much JavaScript here, just the, uh, the basic outline of it. Um, so essentially the goal here is to extrapolate the text value out of the individual TDs where the background color and the text colors do not match, convert that to a string, and then compare it to the string on line 19 and turn this value from false to true to make it match, essentially. Now, this is not a permutation algorithm, okay? It might look like it, but it is not permutation because we are not rearranging the letters. We are not rearranging any of these strings. We are capturing it and storing it in our data structure, but we are not rearranging it. We are not um, reordering it in any way, which is the definition of permutation. Um, I'm going to show you two ways to complete this exercise. The first approach is the naive approach where we will use nested loops, which will give us a quadratic runtime, which is not efficient. Okay. After that, we are going to refactor the code to make it more efficient to give us a linear runtime of O of n. Okay, let's get right into it. Um, so let me show you the algorithm that we are going to, uh, to follow to do this. So the first thing we need to do is to go ahead and grab the table in the DOM. Okay. Since we only have one table in this HTML page, we can just, we can just go ahead and, and use query selector to grab a table. Okay. Next, we need to have some sort of storage mechanism to store the data, our data structure. Since this is a well, since this is an instructional video, I would make the naming convention very explicit for you guys. Like I said earlier, this is not a permutation algorithm, but what you what we will be working on is basic um, JavaScript data structure, uh, looping mechanisms, and control flows. And the other thing is that uh, we will try to understand. DOM manipulation, the DOM methods and properties. Okay, since 
now we have uh, the table and we have um, our storage setup. We're going to do the two nested loops. So the reason why we're using double loops, nested loops here, is that the first loop will loop through the uh, the uh, TRs, the table rows, and then the inner loop will loop through each um, TD, each, each cells. Okay. Now this is my own personal preference here. I like to declare the initializer outside of the loop. OK, so let me explain where these rows are coming from. So rows is a DOM property, OK? It's a DOM property of table. Since this is our table, so the rows represent these TRs up here, OK? And we're looping through that, like I said earlier. I'm calling the, I'm, calling, I'm referring to this as call because think of the matrix type uh, structure, okay, where you have uh, rows and columns. Okay, so again, the cells are like the rows. Uh, in the outside loop. Let's look at this definition. Okay. All right. So there's a definition for those cells. And the cells represent each TDs in here that we're looping through. Again, just think of the, uh, the matrix data structure where you have columns and rows. Okay, so now what we need to do, uh, now that we're inside of the cell, is we need to gain access to the style property. And how we do that is we can um, capture the style property in the DOM. Background color in the DOM property is this, the same as background color snack case in CSS properties, OK? So in the DOM, we use um, camel case instead of um, snake case. And we get the colors of the, uh, the, the, all the text. And then we are going to do a control flow here. Okay, so what we're checking here is that if the background colors does not match the text color in these cells, we want to capture the inner value, the inner text of the cells that don't match, and then push it to this array here called non-matching letters array that we set up earlier. Okay, so the inner text is the uh, property to get the inner text without the HTML 
which would be referred to as inner HTML. Okay, so one way that we can visualize this is that off, off screen, I went ahead and I created a um, console.log so we can um, better visualize this and have a mental model of what's going on here. All right, so I'm, I'm just console logging out the, um, the inner text and then the, uh, uh, the background color and the uh, text color property, okay? So the loop, this is what I'm looking at right now in the loop. And the DOM order, if you read the instruction, it says that, um, let's see, the instruction says to that the function should return the found letters as a string, the order of the letters matters, okay? We are already getting the orders for free, okay? Because if you look at the uh, the cells here, they're all in alphabetical order from top to bottom, so we get the ordering for free, okay? So when we loop through here, this is, and we, we're checking the color and the control flow, this is what we're seeing right here, okay? We get the letters, and then the background color, and then the uh, text color, okay? Hopefully they'll give you a good, a mental model of what's going on in the DOM. Okay, so now that we've pushed all of the uh, letters that do not match the color of its background, we can go ahead and take a look at what that array looks like. The array um, that we use to push the uh, non-matching letters in. Okay, so it has our three letters there, but it's in an array, okay? So we need to convert that over to a string. And so what we can do is we can just call join on it and that will convert to a string, okay? So now, you look at the algorithm, okay, which need to convert to a string, and then we need to return it, right? Okay, that's it, we're done. But like I said earlier, this is the naive approach, okay? This approach will give us a quadratic one time, okay, and which is not good. So uh, if you're in too big old, it'll be something like like that, okay. So that'll be okay. We don't want that. We want a linear one time and space complexity of all of that. So we can go ahead and get rid of all this, well, not all of it, but. Most of it, uh, let me get rid of all of that. Um, the algorithm would be pretty much the same, okay? But here's the thing. We do not, we can go straight into the cells, okay? Um, we don't have to look to the TR to get access to the cells. So how we can do that is we could, let's see, we could call this table cells. We can use query selector all. Okay, query selector all, if you look at the signature there, query selector all will give us a node list, okay, a node of all the TDs. So we need to pass TD in here. Okay, again, this is the CSS style selector to grab, to look at the table and then get all the TDs. All right, so now we have a collection, okay. And because of that, we can call for each loop on it. So table cells, oops. Dot for each, all right. I'm going to give it the predicate here. Um, so it's a, the concept's the same as earlier. Okay, we need to capture the background colors collections. Uh, get all the background colors.
and just copy and paste here. Save a little bit of time. So, um, we can do a control flow here like we did earlier with the if statement. But what we can do here is we can just use a uh, ternary operator. So that's essentially um, just like um, the if control flow that we used in the previous approach, but it's just a ternary, just a little bit more concise syntax. So as you can see here, we got the same result. Okay. Um, so now we uh, we push all of the non-matching. Uh, String into the into our array up here, and then we join it to convert it into a string, uh, from convert it from an array to a string, and then we match this value down here, and that's how we got true. Um, to make this syntax even shorter, um, what you could do as an option is you can do something like this. Okay, I know the, uh, let me zoom out a little bit because I have this zoom really, really tight. Okay, you have a really more concise code. Okay, all in one line. Um, if that's something that you're, you know, that you want to do. Um, but the thing, the thing with this syntax is that it's going to be really, it's going to be challenging to test. Okay, if you're running unit test, is a little bit more, a little bit more challenging for you to test than the other way. Let me revert back to what it was before. Okay. So this with this approach, because we're only using one loop. Um, our runtime is linear, okay? It's O of n, okay? So much more, much more efficient than the previous approach, okay? Let me give this once again. So the link to the starter files are uh, in the description. Good luck.